Especially hope you enjoy it so far. I know you're getting any indication from Vera that you might get a, get a start in one of the games. Um, look, I suppose everyone's been extremely welcoming so far. Um, it's been a great first couple of days. Um, we're only two sessions in now, and obviously I'm new to the team, so um, Vera's been mixing it up a bit and giving everyone a bit of a chance um, during the sessions. So we're going to train this evening, and we'll see, and we'll focus on um, our tactics for Friday's game. And um, yeah, look, it's really exciting. Tell us about the move to Shelburne and how that's working out for you. Yeah, it's a big move, I suppose. I've moved my whole life, I suppose, now towards um, football and my football career. Um, moving up to Dublin was a um, a step, and Shells is going good, um, I suppose. I started off um, scoring two goals against my ex-club, Cork City, and then it was a bit... I wasn't on the score sheet as much, I suppose, um, which can be a bit frustrating as a forward. But I was happy with my performances, and um, I felt I was working hard. Um, so, yeah, look, got back on the score sheet at the weekend, and now to be involved in this international camp is a huge honour. And was it for international honours in particular that you made that decision to move to Shelburne? It was a bit of everything, to be honest. Um, I knew I wanted to try break into the Irish team, and obviously I was playing GA back in Cork, so I think if I stayed in Cork, the GA was probably too near to, to get at. So um, just making that move, I suppose, to Shelburne and trying something different for myself and testing myself that way. And then obviously it's um, I'm away and I'm living in Dublin, so... I can't go down for Cork GA training, so yeah, look, everything kind of just seemed that it was a move that I wanted to do, and um, thankfully now I'm I'm here, so I'm gonna enjoy the opportunity. This is a question I would have asked John Egan in the last few days. Um, is it a help that there's more Cork people coming into the international squad these days? Yeah, it's nice. Um, I suppose like you see the how good Denise is doing, Megan, and then obviously Ava, um, who I had played Cork City with. All having them here is nice because. The girls have been extremely welcoming, but obviously having having that bit of cork um, cork blood around you is is also a bit of a help, and getting feedback from them um, is also great. The amount of cork people on the pitch last night, and you know she does the Albany quite well, don't you? I do. Yeah, I grew up with him um, in my estate, and I used to play on the same um, Gaelic football team as him because my dad was the coach. So we definitely grew up close. Um, we definitely have a slagging that I beat him in one goal the odd time. So um, yeah, I'm delighted for him. What do you think it meant to him last night to get his first senior cap? Yeah, I think I don't think um, words can explain how happy he is. I think it's something that he's always wanted to do, and now that he's done it, I suppose it's gave me a boost that I can hopefully go go do it. And look, he's a credit to himself, and this has been a long time coming. And he was only on the pitch for three or four minutes or something, and he made he created an opportunity, got a free kick, and could have scored a goal. So, just goes to show the talent he has and um, how much he's willing to play for his country. And hopefully the same story will be of you in the next uh, week uh, or so. Thanks very much, Sergio. Best of luck. Thank you, Tony. Sophie Downey. Hi, how are you? Hi, Sophie. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, So we've seen a number of international teams at the moment are playing different international teams in this break. And I'm just wondering, with Ireland playing Iceland twice quite close together, do you think you prepare for that slightly differently? Do you kind of expect to learn quite a bit between the two games that you can then implement in the second game? Yeah, look, I suppose we're looking at um, the World Cup qualifier in September, so that's what the focus is on, and obviously these are preparation for that. Um, and Vera and Eileen and all the background staff have done have done their work on that, and now it's our job to try, as a team, to try to do it on the pitch. So, yeah, everyone's coming together and we're trying new things out, and we'll try for the first game and see how it goes, and then... Obviously, if it goes well, we'll continue doing it. And if we have to make a few changes, I'm sure Vera will, will see them and um, make whichever changes she needs. And personally for you, what is the, the biggest thing you want to get out of this camp? I suppose it's just the experience, really. Um, you see the talent in the camp. You see the talent um, in the Women's National League. And unfortunately, there's obviously players injured. And um, I suppose I've got lucky that I've got to step in there. Um, so, yeah, just, I suppose, learn from all the players. They're all big players. They're big names. Um and it's just really exciting to be in here and learn from, from top coaches and top players. Has anyone given you any particular advice coming into the camp? I think probably the most advice that I've got from everyone is just enjoy it. Um, I think coming in, you think it's 10 days, but I think they'll go by really quick. Um, and it's obviously the sessions, they go by quick as well. So I think just enjoy our football and obviously chat to all the girls and get to know them because they are stars and this is where any player wants to be. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I'll well, do enjoy it and best of luck. Thank you. Aaron Clark. 
Thanks, Archer. Um, in terms of just coming into this, how have you just found the adaption, especially considering you know being involved a little bit more in the home base sessions this year? And how have you found the adaption? Obviously, coming from Cork to Shelburne would be a step up in terms of intensities with the likes of Noel, and then to go again to home base and then to international. How have you found all the step ups in the in the, in the last couple of months? Yeah, I think um, as I said, it's been exciting. Um, you see the the players that are playing in the top leagues over in England and. Um, Denise and Diane over in America and stuff and they play at the top level and they let you know if if you're performing well or what you need to do better and I think that's really important and obviously the Women's National League is growing but we don't have as much experienced players so I think just to learn from their experience and um, the demand and the, the tone that they set in every session um, it's huge and obviously Katie's, Katie's a big player, a player that I've always looked up to and having her tell everyone what to do and kind of keep that togetherness on the pitch and off the pitch is, is a huge factor as well. Especially, as you say, working with great leaders, like you've some good leadership at Shelburne, but as you say, you can't be being around experienced players, and especially if you want to bring your game on to the next level. Yeah, this is where every player wants to be, I think, so just to be involved now this week is, is an honour, and um, yeah, you're, you're around the best of the best, so um, I can't complain. In terms of just the, 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 the whole analysis stuff and things like that, has has Vera picked any things that maybe she, she's found that she wants you to work on in particular to help you improve? Um, yeah, look, I spoke to Vera before coming into this camp um, when I was in the extended squad for the last two and she gave me a few a few tips on what I could work on and then obviously the home base is it's, it's nice because you get to she gets to see you in a proper training session and Eileen obviously is great as well um, and she watches all the games so yeah, look, there's little bits that I need to work on and there's obviously always room for improvement. So I'm in lear- I'm enjoying learning everything and um, I'm excited to see what's ahead. Just the last one for me. How much has, has working with the likes of Noel King this year helped as well? It's obviously someone with a high pedigree in women's football to come into the Shelburne as well. Yeah, I think Noel um, has a, a mind of a real um, international manager, which is obviously impacted us and um, all his trainings. He kind of keeps them high intensity, which is good as well. And... Um, he focuses a lot on the players and trying to work best with the players, which I think is great. And obviously, I've moved from to Shells this year, so it's been a, a start for me, a new start for me, a new start for him. So we're all just getting to know each other, and so far, so good. Brilliant, cheers, Sasha. Thanks, Aaron. Dan Petron. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, I Hope you're well. Um, I suppose first of all, we we mentioned about Katie McCabe there. Um, obviously, she was a, a Shelbourne player before moving on to, to Arsenal. Um, you know, I suppose have you had a chance to speak to her since you moved to Shelbourne about kind of her old times there at the club? And you know, is she kind of living proof? I suppose that you know, a girl from the national league can go, you know, and, and play in a bigger league in the future, and you know, go on to have a great career. Yeah, look, um, Katie was actually up training with us um, before we came into this camp, so she was at Shell's training, which. Obviously, for the player just signed, it was kind of a big, uh, I suppose, to see a player like that just come and train and obviously playing football with her, you learn so quick. Um, so, yeah, that's been nice. Um, and look, Leanne has went from Shells as well over to England and I'd be friendly with Leanne and just seeing the step-ups they've made. Um, but, yeah, I think Katie definitely um, loves Shelburne and loved playing with Shelburne and she has definitely shown that you can get to the top level from the Women's National League and she's definitely... She, proved to everyone um, being the captain of the Irish team as well she's a true leader and um, yeah look she's a great person to be around and someone that definitely I'd say most of the girls look up to and want to be like and just secondly then um, I suppose there isn't really kind of you know regular goal scorers I suppose in the in the Irish team at the minute is there kind of an opportunity I suppose that you know if you could score in kind of back to back games or put a little run of <laughs> scoring together that you know, you can kind of claim one of those forward spots, you know, going forward? Um, I suppose, look, there's the talents here. You have unbelievable strikers. You've Amber just after winning her league. You've Rihanna, top player. Um, so, yeah, look, we're all just here to work hard. And for me, even just to be here is a huge opportunity. But at the end of the day, it's what suits the team best. Um, and obviously, if I get my opportunity, I'd hope to, to try um affect the score and obviously you need to score to win games so yeah look there's an opportunity for everyone there and I think I've got my opportunity now that I'm in the squad so obviously I want to try try get a few minutes and if I was to score it'd be great but 
it's whatever is best for the team. That's brilliant. Thanks so much and best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Jared Brill. Hi, Saoirse. How are things? Hi, Jared. So, obviously, up until last year, you were managing dual commitments between Gaelic football with the Cork Leeds as well. You decided to solely concentrate Sean with Shelburne this year. Given you come from a strong GA background with Nemo Rangers, how hard was the decision? I know Cork maybe aren't the old conquering team that used to be, but they know themselves are not far away from getting back to the promised land. Yeah, it was difficult, but look, when, when you have a goal in your mind and you're driven to achieve that, I think you'll sacrifice anything. Um, and look, I think I was lucky in a way that the GA wasn't back yet, and I was I was training away with soccer, so that made it a little bit easier. Um, and then obviously getting getting the call up just makes it makes it feel worthwhile. And um, it, yeah, as I said, it's all worth it now, and I'm delighted. Did I see an interview you done with the examiner a couple of weeks back? You still say you have dreams and hopes to win in Ireland for Cork. Do you see yourself kind of going back on a dual commitment, or would you like to kind of fully stick at the soccer for a while? maybe make a professional career of it and then maybe at the twilight of your is it that's when you look to come back and play Gaelic football again? Yeah, look I've only I've only just left the GA now so I can't think that far ahead. Um but for now it's just focusing on the soccer and I said that this was my focus to try to break into Vera's team and now that I'm here I just wanna enjoy the enjoy the experience in the moment, um and soak it all in and hopefully be involved in um the future camps as well and maybe be involved in the games this week. But for now that's just my focus. Um, but yeah, J will always have a place in my heart. And but right now, it's it's all about Shelburne and and the Irish team. You say you've been blessed to play in big stadiums like Crow Park and Tallaght last year. How much would it be the ice and the cake and ticking it all off the box if you were to play in big stadiums in the World Cup in New Zealand and Australia in two years' time? Yeah, look, I think that's where every player wants to be. I think the girls were unlucky not to be in the Euros this year, and I think. If I believe, um, I'm a firm believer everything happens for a reason, so I really think that they've learned from it and it's given them, I suppose, the the courage now and the commitment and the want to go and get into that, the World Cup. So I think everyone's ready for it and everyone's looking forward to these games. I'm going to treat them like, like qualifiers um, and they are two big, game for us, ga- two big games for us before, before September, so it's exciting times ahead. Thanks, Saoirse, and best of luck with the upcoming matches. Thank you. Saoirse, how are you doing? Hi, Owen. Um, just, um, apologies, I was in a little late on what was going wrong with the machine, but in case you've asked before, I mean, when you moved to Shells, was that with get, getting more chances with Ireland in mind? Um, I think I said it to Tony earlier that I think it was more the fact um, I was ready to take the next step in my career. Um, I wanted to be on the Irish team was looking at going abroad and as well being in Cork I was so near the GA it kind of made it too easy to well we're saying easy too accessible for me to just play GA and soccer so I think with the move to Shells obviously Noel King coming in and they're an established team who've come second um, the last three years I think it was so obviously I want to make an impact there and try try get a title with them um, but yeah it just felt like the right fit at the right time. Yeah, did you move up to Dublin as well? Yeah, I've moved up for the summer now, so I was travelling up and down at the start. Um, and then once my college finished, I moved up, so I'm living up there now. Yeah, are you, are you working as well now? Yeah, I'm working from home now with Blonde Sport, so um, they're very good to me. And I also have my own clothing range, um, Freedom. So everything's going good and moving swiftly, so I'm enjoying it. Yeah, did you move in with Owen, did you? It's your brother, isn't it? Yeah, no, I didn't move in with him. I moved in with myself, right. so yeah. Does he does he cover the women's team much? Does he? Because I know he was out doing Vera's press conference last week. Um, I think Stephen does it mostly. Stephen McCarthy, so he does a bit, but um, not as much. All right, fair enough. Right. Thanks a lot, Sirsha. Thank you. Aiden. Thanks, Sirsha. Um, just one for me. You spoke about Chidozi earlier on, and obviously you know him, but just a question on him, given that he he played GA as well, and you know maybe he benefited from that. There's a lot of talk, particularly in coaching circles, about you know the need to focus on one and to pick a sport early on and there's a lot of people who believe you're better off having a couple of sports learning different skills learning different disciplines what's your take on that i mean do, do, is it a mistake to focus to for a coach or for an association to ask a player like yourself or chidozi to focus on a sport at a young age um yeah look i think at a young age you don't know where like where your potential is at and i think you need to get a feel for all the different sports 
Um, I would definitely say basketball helped me with my eye coordination. Gaelic football helped me with my quick sprints and stuff. And I really believe that without playing all those sports, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, and I think Dozy could say the same, like GA training growing up um, was an extra session for us. So we were training more nights a week than you would if you're just playing soccer twice a week with your local club. So I definitely think it's important for every child to get involved in all sports and then then get the option um, as you get older to to pick which one you want to, I suppose, excel at. And Adoze has done it and, and now I've done it. And I think um, we're we're doing well so far and um, it's, it's standing to us as well. Yeah, there, there is pressure from coaches and look, whatever sport you're in, the coach wants to, to win games and wants to win the championship and they're thinking maybe short term, but, but I suppose, you know, Chidozi did play at a, at a high level in GAA, as did you, and, and I suppose there is proof there that you can you can benefit from from being allowed to play, to play to play two sports, but when, when you're still interested in it. Yeah, I think every coach, of course, is going to want, want all the players they can get, but I think over the last three or four years I've learned that us as players need to be a bit more selfish and choose what we want to do and I, I definitely wanted to play um, Gaelic football and soccer and be a dual player for, for three years and that's what I did and then I have decided to, to focus on my one sport when, when the time is right for me and I think that's important because I think it's definitely brought out the best in me um, and I'm sure probably Adoza would agree with me that it's brought out the best in him. And just a funny one for me, what skills, what, what do you take from, from playing GA that Jen, you can take into, into soccer? Clearly there are different disciplines, different rules, different teams, but what, what, what did you learn from GA that helps you now as, a, as an international and as a Shelburne player? Yeah, I think probably um, my f- oh, five yards, um, getting away from that player, um, I played full forward, so just getting that those extra yards and turning on players and getting into goal, obviously you have the ball in your hand, but I suppose the agility and stuff is still the exact same. You have to have quick feet, you have to get away from your marker, and you have to know where your your teammates are around you. And I think that's something that's really important. You have to read read ahead of the game and know your next pass before you know you get the ball, um, instead of thinking it when you get the ball. So yeah, I definitely believe that that's helped me in playing at such a high standard, um, has definitely boosted me reading the game and being able to be aware of my surroundings. Thanks, Fisher. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, Mark's not been able to get in. So anyone else for the daily section? Any other questions? Yes, Gary, I'll take one. Please. Sorry, John, I didn't see you there. All right. Sergio, how are you doing? John, Hi, John. Here. Um, just wanted to ask you about uh, when you were assessing your options there after leaving Cork. You said it was the next stage of your career uh, and moving to Shelbourne. Just wondering, was um, England in your mind or was there any option uh, to go there? Um, yeah, England was in the back of my head um, and Iceland was actually kind of in the air as well to come over here for six months but I think with Covid and everything it was just it was too difficult to come over and trials and stuff you have to quarantine and it just wasn't it wasn't the right fit and um, I think just knowing the Shelburne when um, Noel got on to me it just felt maybe that this is supposed to happen for me and this will be my next step um, in maybe going over there or or was my next step in breaking into the Irish team and um, that was the aim and I'm glad I'm glad I went to Shells and we're doing good so far so hopefully we can continue. And then just again, just going back to your last game for Cork, I know um, it was a difficult defeat against against P. Moon, but was that really sort of an eye opener for you in terms of the standard that a lot of the Irish internationals were, were in P. Moon's team that day and it was, it was a fairly one sided game. Um, was that a bit of an education? Yeah, look, we were a young team. Um, we worked really hard to get there, and I think maybe a bit of the whole occasion and stuff got to us. And after the second goal went in, it was just the heads dropped, and we knew we weren't going to get back. Um, I think looking back on the game, I don't think it was that big of a defeat. Um, if you watched the game, you wouldn't say maybe that we didn't deserve it. We had opportunities that we could have got goals and stuff. But I kind of knew, kind of roughly around that time, that I was going to try. Um, push myself more and try take another step away from my comfort zone and um, try new things. So, yeah, look, it was it was a hard defeat and it was a tough game. And um, but I was still delighted to be there and to be wearing that Cork City jersey on the day was was nice and it was nice to to end my career as with Cork City in a final. Obviously, the result wasn't wasn't to be, but um, we'll just leave we'll forget about that one for now. All right, thanks, sir. Thank you.
Okay, guys, thanks very much.